enough to say most of the time when you hear the word of the Lord, when it speaks to you, repent. When it speaks to you, take it. It will help you in the near future, wherever you are going, so that you can be a perfect Christian that God wants you to be. Every day when we come to the house of the Lord is because we want to hear the word of the Lord. We want it to penalbeat us, to mold us, to do to us what the Father wants it to be done to us so that we can be what God Want us to be in Jesus' name. Can we, if we may, open in the book of Second Timothy, chapter two, Rearevale verse three. We will reach until verse five. Second Timothy, chapter two, Revaling verse three to verse five. Can I read? You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in the warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned until he competes according to the rules. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Can somebody say hallelujah? We have read beautifully or wonderfully a verse or a passage in the book of Second Timothy that is speaking about you, a soldier. And I entitled, entitled the message of today, A Good Soldier. Can you write it down and say, A Good Soldier? Now, there Paul, when he was read, writing to his son Timothy, he said to him, Endure hardship or hardness as a good soldier. In other words, when we are in the road, in the way of God, we are soldiers. Can you tell your neighbor, soldier? Why soldier? Let me try to explain. Sometimes we love to say as Christians, we are in the war. We are fighting. We are praying. We are doing this, we are doing that. But we don't understand that when we are fighting, it is because God has enlisted us or named us soldiers. I will say, rather, of the cross. But we are soldiers. Now today I want us to go and speak about being a soldier. When you want to be a soldier of Christ, the way we have read the Bible says, really surely become a soldier of Christ as God has enlisted you. The way God has patterned you, the way God has molded you, endure all these hardships. In other words, the Bible is trying to tell us that in our Christian life or in our Christian way, there is hardship. Can you tell the person that is close to you? There is hardship. Hora hora, the road that we have taken, it's not a freeway. There are robots along the way. There are humps. There are stop signs. There are things that we have to meet along the way. So that we can be able to be the soldiers that God wants us to be. In other words, as Christians, whilst living in this earth as children of God, we have to be soldiers of the cross, soldiers according to the way of God. Now, you can then ask yourself, Mama, why are you saying soldiers? The Bible says we are always fighting. Now, you cannot fight if you are not a soldier. You can never win if you are not a soldier. Okay, fine. I can use my hands to fight. I can use my legs to fight. But now this kind of a hardship 
that we meet along the way as Christians need us to have some things so that we can be able to conquer. So that we can be able to take over. So that we can be able to take that which we are crying for. We need to fight. The Bible says fight a good fight of faith. So long here we will go and ask and say, now how are we going to fight a good fight of faith? If we can look at the lives of soldiers, I mean here on earth. When you look at them, they don't look similar like us or to us. Hmm? When you are a soldier here on earth, you wear some kind of clothes that we don't wear. You can never, I don't believe, I've never seen it, find a soldier wearing high heels going to war. Am I right? You can never find a soldier wearing stepezana going to war. You are laughing. You can never find a soldier wearing a suit and a tie going to war. You know I love to speak with pictures, you'll understand me. Well, the Bible says it, it says, we must be soldiers as God has enlightened or placed us to be soldiers. In other words, when we are Christian, the day you stood up and say, Lord, I want to be born again, I want to be your child, you have started war. Can you tell the person that is close to you, you have started war. Now, when you have started this war, Zal, it needs you to take yourself, place yourself in a certain kind, dress in a certain kind, speak in a certain way, walk in a certain way, so that you can be able to conquer the war that you are facing each and every day. In other words, the Bible is telling us, because we are soldiers, there is a hardship that will come across. Utlabalidi challenges, challenges that will come across in life. There will be diseases across the way in our lives. There will be problems across in the way in our lives. There will be many, 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 many other things that will come in our way in our lives. That the Bible says, endure and fight like a soldier. It does not mean mothers and fathers. When you are born again, everything comes just in G. You wake up, you find a plate of cake on top of your table. Uh -uh. You wake up in the morning, you find money being stabbed, stuck on top of your bed. Uh -uh. Fight. Can you tell the person that is close to you, fight? You know what? When you say that today, Father, I accept you as my savior. Father, today I want to be born again. Father, today I'm changing my life. Father, today I want to live another kind of life. You have started war with the enemy. You have entered the camp of the enemy and say, enemy, here I am. Look at me. I want to fight you. And I know when I fight you, I'm going to conquer. Why am I going to conquer? It is because I'm going to fight according to the way that God has placed me to come and fight you. Each and every one of us today, we have a way that we have to, to fight our own fights. In other words, the fights that I'm fighting, the wars that I'm encountering, all the problems that I'm encountering are not the same as yours. And even though I'm fighting poverty, I will fight poverty the way that God has placed for me. And you will fight your poverty according to the way that God has placed for you. It means we are fighting. But your war is not my war. Huh? The way you fight is not the way I fight. But now God placed me just to come and stand here and scream 
and shout and make a joyful noise and then I conquer my wars. And when God has placed you so that when you come into his presence, when you come into this house, you just stand there and jump like a crazy person. Shout and scream like a crazy person. Speak things that people don't understand. Then you conquer your war. This says, when we want to conquer our war, we want to do it the same way. We can never do it the same way. Why? Because we are not the same. When the Bible goes down there, it says, like an athlete, the athlete is not crowned until he or she finishes. Eh? Finishes. Mara. I finish. When the person finishes, the person must be finishing according to the laws. Say hallelujah. I'm sorry to put pity sometimes. When you are fighting, jab, straight, whatever, whatever you are doing, Check your Christianity. Check what you are doing. When you are pitching your punches, you must be doing it according to the law. If you are a worshiper, worship God like you are crazy. If you are an intercessor, intercede like you are crazy. If you are a whatever, do it like you are crazy. Why? Because you are fighting right where, where you are according to the law. I'm saying this because I want to make an example. I am a pastor. I cannot fight like an intercessor. Am I right? And then there is an intercessor. How can we have a butcher to talk about what's one like a three bar rappel? I cannot fight like them. They are doing it according to the law. Shalom Rina. Because we love things. Utawana ridi le group, sorry. Utawana ridi le group. Group ya tapelo ya urapela katolu fuya shiu. Eh, lani ya koshi sana batagababa. And we don't have to meet to fight our wars. Everyone must fight his or her own war. Why? Because you are a soldier. Whatever you are coming across belongs to you. It does not belong to me. I don't have to be with you to fight my fight. I have to fight my fight being alone. That is why you see us fighting and we don't get answers. I sit with Sis Kwena here. <laughs> Sorry, ma. And we start fighting. Sis Kwena is a nurse. Hmm? Everything, she's, everything she's thinking about is patients at clinic, at any hospital. And me, I'm thinking Bible. I don't have a job to do. My job is Bible. So now when we come together, I'm just giving an instruction, an illustration so that we can understand. Now when we are together, we are praying for prosperity, all right? Now when we are praying for prosperity with Siskwena, Siskwena is saying, Lord, more patients in hospital. I want people to come so that I can get my salary at the end of the month. And then again, Alice says, when I pray, I said, Lord, heal them in Jesus' name. Heal them by the blood of Jesus. They must never be sick in Jesus' name. They must come to your house. They'll get healed. Can't you see that we are contravening ourselves? That is why our prayers are not being answered. When I'm fighting my war, I sit down alone. Papa, your children are sick. Daddy, can you heal them? That's my job. Papa, can you bring them? I cannot follow them everywhere. But if you bring them, Daddy, I will do that which you told me. I will lay my hands on them. And I know they are going to get healed. And Sasquena, when she's praying, she say, Daddy, if they don't come to us, 
hospital. Our clinic is going to close up. Now, Lord, bring them so that we can check them up and give them medicines so that they can get healed. And at the end of the month, I get my salary. That one is fighting war according to the law, according to what he has been given. I will be fighting my war according to the laws that God has given me. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you a real soldier? We are in the war. And when we are in the war, we fight again to, uh, uh, according to the law, pleasing that one hmm? who made us to be soldiers. Okay. Let's go to the book of James chapter 4. <clears throat> you know, we are not prospering in our Christianity because we don't know the way we are fighting. Yes, we are believing we are soldiers. But we don't know what we are doing. James chapter 4, this one. As we are soldiers, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they, they not come from you, from your desires for pleasure? That war in your members. You lust and do not have. Jesus. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. I'm just reading this one. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Can somebody say hallelujah? The Bible says, tell somebody that is close to you, you are a soldier. And I ask again, whom are you fighting? Allow him to answer you or her to answer you. Whom are you fighting? Can <clears throat> you speak? Ask again, whom are you fighting? Now, this is what the Bible is saying. I'm finishing, not long, don't worry. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasures? That war in your members. When we are here, remember we are soldiers, we have a common enemy. And our enemy is the devil, Satan, and his demons, and his cause. Now, the Bible is asking us, children of God, where do fires now come from you, amongst you? Yeah, but I have to, and it answered itself when it goes forward. It's, and it said, it's because of our lust and our pleasures, desires for things of the world, sinful things. Why? Because we want to please our own selves. When we are soldiers, God has called us for one purpose, to fight the enemy. Now, because we are soldiers, retreated the AK-47. Huh? Our AK-47, they know my children, is the word. Huh? Now, you carry AK-47. You know, when you are having this word, your AK-47, instead of using it against the devil, you use it against me. Mm. 
I said, Naki Baibin. Did you hear what he said? It said, because we've got earthly desires. The problem is you are not in the way. You are not a right soldier. You must be a good soldier. Oh. And when you are a good soldier, you will help us in our fighting. There won't be wars against us or amongst us. We will never fight against ourselves. What we will do, we will comprehend each other. The Bible explains and said, we fight against each other, children of Papa, because so we've got earthly desires, sin. I hear mama when I stand here and say, you become angry. We fight against each other because we don't know the kind of war that we must fight. The war that we must fight is the, is the devil. And now when we want to conquer in this fight, hey, be very irritated. the Bible says we must go according to the law. That's where strife and envy and everything will never happen in our midst. Why? Because we are going according to the law of God Almighty. We are soldiers in the house of God, no matter hatred. We are soldiers in the house of God as kids, no matter we are class, classes. A group of electricians. A group of cleaners, a group of, <laughs> of securities, you know what? A group of doct uh, doctors. Hmm? But still, in one place, in the house of Daddy, of our father. That is why when we fight our wars, we don't conquer. That is why when we go to our father, we cry, we shout, we scream. We do all kinds of things, but the answers don't come. Because we ask, yes, we ask amiss. Why? Because sin is in our midst. We are not doing things according to the law of God. If we were doing things according to the way of God, when we say, Papa! They are calling me. I must go down to go and see what is happening. Why? Because he knows we are in a war. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you? You are in a war. Make right your way with Jesus. We are in a war. Hallelujah. Let us go. I want us to finish. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Can you tell the person that is close to you? Don't fight me. I'm just fighting my war. Don't fight me. It says 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, hurry, Lord, when we fight. We don't fight a fight of flesh. Arlene Triana Malemadi Flesh and blood. Our war is not carnal. Our war is spiritual. Can you tell the person that is close to you? Our war is spiritual. How spiritual? Because we are fighting the devil. We are fighting things that we cannot see by our physical eyes. I can ask you a very beautiful question. Where is the devil? Eh? We cannot see him. Anger. But we are fighting. Now the Bible says our fight is not carnal. As in our money. We are fighting against spiritual wickedness and hosts. 
We are warring against the devil himself. That is why I said in the beginning, when that day you took a decision and say, I want to be born again, you have started war. Everything you want to get, the devil wants to fight you first. Everything you want to have, the devil wants to fight you first. Why? Because he wants you to desert the post. I love that word. Desert your post. Huh? When you are a soldier, you have your own post. When you have your post, that is where they post you. So now every day, the commander knows that I know that Eunice is there in her post. Now when the devil starts to fight you, the devil wants you to desert your post. Can you ask the person that is, how many times did you desert your post? When God comes to search for you, he doesn't find you. Our commander is that to check on you. If you are doing the right job or doing it the right way, he doesn't find you. You have deserted the post. But at the end of the day, I love this God. At the end of the day, you want to have full salary. <laughs> eh? It's full salary. Marahuna only five days in a month you deserted the post. And when the time of blessings comes, you want to be blessed like others. But you know that you were not every day in your post. Some of us here, our post is just to be in the house of the Lord. Hmm? Just to be here. It's our post. Some of us who have been posted to come here and shout and scream like me, eh, eh, it's my post now. Some of us here, we are here to pray, 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 and pray, and pray. It's your post. But now look, in 30 days, you have deserted your post five days, ten days. But when the month comes, the month end comes, you want to be paid the same salary that you have to be paid. Does it come and possible? Is it possible? Maralia Bonori, can you see now that we are putting God where he is not supposed to be placed? We do things our own way, but when we want blessings, we want him to do it the right way. Now, because God, I am your child, because you are blessing others, I want to be blessed. Tomorrow you know that you've been deserting and deserting and deserting. Each and every day you are not good doing things the way God wants you to do them. Now at the end of the day, when God comes to measure and to look at what you have been doing, what this soldier has been doing, God finds out that you have never done anything. And I believe because God is a just and faithful God, he will never give you the reward that you are supposed to get. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell somebody that is, is close to you again? Are you a good soldier? We are here to fight. We are in a war. We have to pull down strongholds. We have to cast down arguments. And every I think that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's our war. We are here to fight the devil. One way or the other we have to fight. Hallelujah. We are here because some of us we are sick. We fight and fight and fight until we get our healing. Can you tell the person that is close to you? I'm finishing. We are in a war. What kind of a soldier are you? Are you a good soldier? Are you fighting the devil? Or you are fighting uh, your friend? There is war in our midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you? There is war in our midst. We are fighting against each other. We forget that we have to fight the enemy, the devil. The Bible said up there where we have read, it says, a person who does not fight a good fight, he makes enmity with God. I'm interpreting it the other way. 
In other words, if you're not doing things the right way, you are making enmity with God. In other words, you are no longer a soldier that you are supposed to be. You are no longer a good soldier that you are supposed to be. But I believe that as we are here today, all of us, we are going to sign down today and tell ourselves, I want to be a good soldier. I want to fight a good fight and win at the end of the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us finish. I want to read this verse. I believe all of us will love and we, 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 we've heard about it. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. We might read even 10 or the other ones, but I want us to read verse 12. Can I read it for you? It's explaining to us children of God. It says to us, Mrs. Mr. Sissy, brother, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Can you ask the person that is close to you, what are you fighting against? What are you fighting against? Allow that person to answer you. What are you fighting against? We are fighting against spirits. When you say you are born again, you start to war with the spirits of the devil. And now because you are fighting these spirits, the Bible said so, we wrestle against them day in and day out so that we can be able to conquer. And then we can go and read a beautiful verse up there. I love it and I will close. Tell the person that is close to you, you are a soldier. Now say soldier. You are not fighting against flesh and blood. You are fighting against principalities. Against powers. Against rulers of darkness, of this age. Are you writing them down? Against spiritual hosts of wickedness. That's what we are fighting against. Are you hearing them? We are fighting. And then the Bible goes on and said, Mr. Mrs. Brother, sister, because you are fighting, you are in a war and you have to conquer. You must at the end of the day be a good soldier. Now this is what you have to do. Can somebody say amen? amen. This is what you have to do. And verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wile of the devil. Hallelujah. Now, can you say, soldier? Put on the whole armor so that you can be able to conquer. Soldiers, when they go to war, most of the time I don't see them fighting. Go back to Badulang, where people stay. Hmm? All of the time you'll see them fighting in the bushes and where, 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 and everywhere and everywhere. And as they are fighting there in the bushes, They've got a certain kind of attire that they wear. Eh? Am I right? Now the Bible is telling us, Banababa, children of God, we are soldiers, but you cannot go to wear wearing high heels and shades and uh, weave and makeup on. I never said you must not make yourself up. Eh? When time of war comes, there's no time of all those things. It's time of war. When we go for war, we put on the right gear. Most of the time I will see soldiers, they will be worried. I've never seen a soldier wearing my quite quiet heels. I all of them see ladies, brothers, men, and everyone wearing boots. And I've never seen them wearing skirts. I see all of them wearing trousers. 
And I've never seen them wearing flexy, beautiful blouses. I see all of them wearing jackets. I'm speaking about things that are logical, things that we see. And now all of them, I don't see them putting weave or being beautiful or whatever. I see them wearing caps. Now, because we are soldiers, this is what the Bible says. I'm saying to you, I'm finishing. I want you to understand. It says, number one, you put on the whole armor, isn't it? What are the boots? There's some boots, some trousers, some jackets, some caps, some everything and everything. So that you can be able to conquer. And if you miss one, if you are not wearing shoes, thorns will work with you there in the bush. And if you are not wearing the right jacket, hey, trees will work with you and branches there in the bush. And if you are wearing mini skirts, hey, hey, you are in trouble. You will never be able to go where you are supposed to go. Your skirt will be left along the road. So now, so that we can be able to conquer children of God. The Bible says, right there where we were reading in the book of Ephesians, it says to us, let us put on the whole armor of God from head down to the toes. I've given a good and beautiful example about a physical soldier that we know. Now, as soldiers that are fighting a spiritual war, we have to also wear spiritual clothes. It says, in verse 14, I'll just read through them. You will catch the one that is important to you. It says, stand then for having gathered your waist. Yay! With the truth. Number two. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. <laughs> and then it goes and say. Having showed your feet. With the preparation of the gospel of peace. Wherever you go. You are not going there to backmouth somebody. You are going there to speak about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are going there to speak about his goodness, his wonderfulness, his greatness and all the beautiful things that he is doing in your life so that the others can also know that Jesus Christ is Lord. But most of us, our feet, they take us to go and speak some things we don't even know and understand. I'm finishing. And he says, above all, take the shield of faith, which will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. When you have faith, let me demonstrate it for you just a little bit. When you have faith, today I woke up in the morning, I'm not saying I was sick. I woke up in the morning, I'm sick. And something comes to me and say to me, don't go to church because you are sick. You said, no, 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 no. I'm a child of God. I have to be in the house of God. Pain or no pain, I'm going to the house of God. I know that when I reach the house of God, God is going to heal me. That's your shield of faith. When something is going bad in your life, things are not working out in your life. When you have the faith of a Christian, you speak against that which will make you to lose a heart or to become tired. Sometimes when you walk around friends and people talking to them, you find there are others who are discouraging you. You are able to say, you don't know the God that saved me. Maybe the God that saved you is that way, but my God is in this way. I love to tell people, you don't know the God that saved me. The God that saved him has made me to be the way that I am today. And I will never leave him even a single day. Do you know why? You don't know where I come from. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you have faith? And the Bible says, it says, take the helmet of salvation. Ask, is there a helmet on top of your head? When you are born again, 
I love the word of God. It puts, the word puts a helmet on top of your head. You are sheltered. On the head, that's where your thoughts are, your mindset, everything about you, the way you think, the way you digest things, the way you meditate, the way you do all these things, they're right here on top now. When you become born again, the Lord puts a helmet on top. In other words, it means those thoughts that you were having before, they become saved and become new thoughts. They are no longer the thoughts of old. Hallelujah. Let's finish up. And it says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray always with all prayers and supplication of the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. I want to end up here. The Bible says, the sword of the spirit. Can you tell the person that is close to you? The sword of the spirit. Most of us Christians, we use the last one. We use the last one. Did you hear the last one? What is it? No, it's not the last one. Prayer. Rina, Bapulusha. We use prayer too much. But here, no helmet, shield, nothing. Food, boots, nothing. Everything, nothing. But prayer. Uh -oh. How can you pray and conquer the fiery darts of the enemy? All the things that the enemy is throwing to you. When you are only, only praying and there is nothing that is covering you. You are praying, 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 but you are not wearing anything. You are naked, naked, naked. The Bible says we must have a sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. When you have this sword, this sword is your rifle. It's your gun. You can never conquer if you don't have your gun. If I can ask some of you here, yeah, what is it that the Bible say when we come to? We don't know. When we reach home today, we put our Bibles there far and we forget about them. We will think about them on Sunday again when we come to church. There is no time of reading. Just have five minutes. Five. Sit down and you read the Bible. And hear what God has to say that day with you. When you are doing so, you have been builded up in your spirit. When you are builded up in your spirit, you have enough bullets to fire to the devil when the devil comes to you. Remember, you are a soldier. You can never win your war when you don't have the full uniform of being a soldier. When you go to kneel down and pray, the first thing you have to do, check on yourself, check what you are wearing. Is it fully fitted? Everything is it there? Everything is there. Then kneel down and say, Father, this is my rifle. This is my helmet, my breastplate, my shoes, my trouser, my jacket, my everything. I have them all, Lord. Now send me. I want to go and shoot. And when I go and shoot, Father, I know I'll be with you. I'm going to conquer. 